freshman drives it and Michigan will see it first. He got his wish. Here's the crowd. A hockey player growing up tough customer completes his opening. He felt like maybe a breakout game for himself today coming back from that meniscus last year. Second down and five. It's a keeper. It's McCarthy to the outside for a first down and then some with no contact. It's a gain of nine. Looks like Deshaun Singleton who's down for Nebraska. Uh, J.J. McCarthy spoke quite um, vividly and full of joy about his hockey career and that is a sport that he's trying to pick back up once again but Singleton the junior out of the state of Louisiana he's one of their big hitters in the secondary and that is not good for Nebraska sincerely hope he's all right as they look at his lower body those three safeties have to be so active especially Isaac Gifford in the middle of those three safeties but you hate to see this for the junior college transfer transfer Singleton. He'll be helped off the field. First down for Michigan. It's a quorum run right up the middle. It's a gain of nine. Gifford the tackle. The Wolverines, their first road game of the year, and they have the possession first on a very windy day in Lincoln, Nebraska. J.J. McCarthy to throw. It's tipped and it's incomplete. Quentin Newsom nearly had a chance at a pick. Michigan 55% on third down this year. Big line, first down run for Corum, keeping those legs moving. Get used to saying something today, Benetti, up the middle. They've only allowed three sacks all year, nine tackles for loss in four games. McCarthy slings it out wide for Donovan Edwards who Jim Harbaugh kind of indicated might have a bigger role. Edwards an outstanding pass catcher Harbaugh just back last week by the way from that three game suspension. And J.J. McCarthy said he missed his vibe. Edwards was split out wide now he gets the carry. This is into the wind on third down and three. And so it's Corum and he is drilled denied by Gifford. The pile's going to end up about a yard short of the line to gain, and this feels like go for it for Michigan. Uh, no question. And that was the same exact surge. So the first third and one, not third and two. It is the same play. They will run it at you and dare you to stop it. Now will they do it a third time in a short yardage situation? My hunch is yes. Here comes the entire state of Nebraska. There it is right up the zipper first down no mystery no and they don't care that you bring eight plus into the box they will run against anything they had five drives of five plus minutes last week against Rutgers because the shots follow tremendous play action team they'll run it again it is Edwards just stabbing his foot through Brown and second down and short coming up. That's what a junior and a veteran player in the system will understand that one time this season his number will be called in a big way. Well he had it called against Ohio State last year and he put up massive numbers over 200 yards as he's out with Mullings in on second and two. Love Wilson in the slot here. He's been a big touchdown maker and McCarthy scanning. Loads of time for McCarthy. Now he wins it downfield. To the end zone, Roman Wilson. Who's got a touchdown? Wow! Wahoo to go to St. Louis High School in order to play football. He woke up at 3 in the morning to get on a flight every day. Dude's helmet to make the play. Stuck it right to him. The Nebraska helmet of Gifford as we check my hometown and across this state who don't get a chance to go out and show their work ethic and toughness. How cool was that Allison when he said that yesterday not and a chance really and he's not thinking about it this way right now but a chance to be in Nebraska Lord first throw tipped in the air and intercepted by Michigan and Kenneth Grant with the long arms at 340 engulfing the ball. That's the first pick for Harburg this year. 
Jeff Sims had major turnover issues the first couple of games, including that opening Big Ten loss at Minnesota. This is another run, and it's Corum just tripped up after a couple of yards. That's Henrich on the stop. Michigan 4 0, all at the big house so far. It's another give. Corum is so patient. He is so cool in the back. Mullings in third and one. And it's Mullings seeking the end zone. Touchdown. Last week, he had six carries in the Rutgers game, but Jim Harbaugh has very much been a man of his word. Fifty-eight, twenty-six, and forty-six is finding its way near a hundred already. But a touchdown for Wilson, then the long run for Mullings. This is a toss, and it's Grant for about a yard and a half. The transfer, Cam Good, with the stop, and this is a defensive line that will rotate a host of guys in red pen or whatever color pen they choose to use for later in the year. Second down and nine for Harburg, who was picked off on the last drive. He's got it to the tight end, Thomas Fedoni, and a first down for Nebraska on a gain of 14. Nebraska's won two in a row. This is where it feels like the 80s and 90s, and Michigan crashes down on top of that speed option that was getting Nebraska about 17 yards a pop the last couple weeks. Yeah. <laughs> what feels like at the 80s the I formation <laughs> or the 29 option for both of them and for Marcus Satterfield Yeah, his buddies are calling him like what are you doing? What planet did you visit and what system are you running because it's none of the fun and gun and spread that he's done so much of his career But you've got to play to your personnel strengths It started on a lark they just as a coaching staff were watching footage because cut-ups were on a computer And then it was like well, let's just run one of them and then it became, you know what? This could be bread and butter for us, considering what we have. Because the option game gives you an opportunity to get two on ones when you can't blow people off the ball like Michigan does. And you see right here the early challenge for Anthony Grant and this offensive line against Michigan stout front seven. You're not moving them. You're not running at them unapologetically like the Wolverines could do to you. So you've got to create those matchups on the edge, those two on ones to stay on the field. Billy Kemp, the wide receiver in motion, third and five for Nebraska. Harbor, pump fake, throws down the middle, first down, and then some. Billy Kemp does get his first touch, and he's all the way inside the 25. <laughs> the one thing I appreciate about Heinrich, the feet say whatever it takes. And the guy basically says whatever it takes as well. They get it to Kemp one more time, and truth be told, Marcus Satterfield is counting the number of touches here for Billy Kemp and he's got a guy reminding him to get the ball to Billy Kemp. That was a topical comment by you from last week with the 10 on the field. Second down and six and a marker comes in and that's the type of thing Nebraska really can't afford today. That's a big left tackle. Offense number 69 five yard penalty second down. Turner Corcoran called for that his 28th consecutive start. Yeah, both the left tackle Corker and the right tackle Ben Hart for Matt Rule, he was concerned. That was no, his number one matchup, right? Some years in the NFL, knows it's a matchup game. Those tackles are going to have a hard time with the speed and quickness. I think that offsides tells you why, right? Try to offset and get off the ball. It's got to be on time. When you see Harrell standing up at the bottom of the formation in white for Michigan, he's already got two and a half sacks. As Harburg throws it, and he's on time and on target to Borkacher, the tight end, Nate Borkacher, to set up third down. It's a jet sweep. And it's Bonner, and he is not going to get to the line to gain. And Iron Bonner hit by Wallace, fourth down. If they snap it, it's going to be a run. At least that's what Marcus Satterfield will tell you, and it looks like they're not going to run a play. Timeout, First Matt Rule. Harburg leaping, dripping back. The spot is what matters, and the far side official says no, and so did Michigan. 
He's well short. It's another run straight ahead for Donovan Edwards. And they'll take three yards on first down, second and seven. It's another handoff. Edwards knocked down. Javen Wright, nice play. Thanks, Matt. Needs a stop right here, Allison. Thank you. J.J. McCarthy with a bullet right down the middle. That's a first down to his tight end, A.J. Barner. Come up as he loves to do with Jim Harbaugh. So good. Now he's got the wind at his back. A little hesitation from Edwards. And Sharon Moore, the offensive coordinator, you were. At O-line backgrounds, you get a great feel for the game. Perfect team to have that on. A little shovel there. It's Barner again. And McCarthy just kind of flicked it out there like a one-timer. Maybe that's done it for 18 starts. Well, as we said off the top, he leads the FBS in completion percentage. And I love for J.J. McCarthy. Oh, they're going to pass it back. He loads up. He stands. He fires right down the middle. That is a bullseye. Man, oh, man, Cornelius Johnson pulls it in. Well, Sharon Moore said in his press conference this week, I love trick plays. He's very willing to do it. Edwards to the outside. He slammed down. In his career, it's been a little unbalanced, but he's very focused on having both sides of him, the beast and the counter beast. He's an exceptional talent. And here he goes. He loves to run and score. Touchdown. Thank you so much, boys. How about that? He thanked, thanked his you. line. Uh, thank you so much, boys. What a great shot. And our mics right down there. Yeah, thank him. Because once again, look at the protection. Nebraska brings five. He feels it. But look at the open space. Nebraska knew it. He runs and scrambles in the middle of the field to throw it. He gets in the red zone. He scrambles well, to bring out the beast and finish it. How about Allison? She just finishes talking about both sides of him. He oh. aggressively runs into the end zone. Oh, thank you. This is prototypical Michigan football. So now Nebraska looking for answers offensively. Just short of 70 yards so far. Harburg out wide for Anthony Grant, and he's drilled by Michael Barrett. Watching the big noon kickoff today, some good conversation about this matchup. And wondering, you know, who has Michigan really played? And everything's been home cooking. It's been very comfortable. Well, I'll say this, through the first 19, 20 minutes, physically, yeah, they've they got something going in the front seven. They got it up front. There's a reason they're back to back Big Ten champs because there are a ton of grown men playing grown men kind of football. Well, they allowed a garbage time touchdown against UNLV and an opening score to Rutgers. The only two touchdowns as Harburg has to fall on this, and it's third and long. And Jesse Minner, you know, it's interesting talking to him about the option and how to play the option. He yep. had some insight about why athleticism can help, and it's about staying upright when you're that much of an athletic freak. And they have so many guys that can just not get cut, play on their feet. They rotate so many. You mentioned that earlier along that defensive line in Colson and Barrett. Two stud linebackers with so much experience. Yeah, and Jesse Minner's time in the NFL, those four years, helped shape him into the D coordinator he's become. With the Baltimore Ravens, Harburg has to climb the pocket and run on third and 16, and he'll be well short as they tried to rip the ball away. Will Johnson was going for it, and it's fourth down after the gain of 11. This is Matt Rule told Allison he's going to be aggressive, but I no. can't hear, can you? No. Nope, you don't get it on fourth and one earlier. And what just kills that drive is what's really bothered Nebraska offensively a bunch. Just a mishandled snap. And Jesse Minter and his crew are going to make you pay. You have a negative play on your own. You have a penalty. You get set back against this defensive scheme. It's going to be very hard to move the chains. Top five of the nation in tackles for loss. You don't really have to help them. As this is back to Jake Thaw, who looks for the sideline and gets tracked down. He's not a very good Kansas State team at all. First down, play action. McCarthy so proficient in play action. Incomplete for Johnson. Newsom trailing him second down.
on a long throw like this, that wind is behind you. It's a tight ball. It just sails far and wide. So do you have to remind yourself which side of the field you're on? A little bit, yeah. I mean, you can feel it, right? especially when it's blowing the way it is today. But less air, the better when you've got the wind with you. Second down, Corum was out in the pattern, and he's too high for Loveland. Third down. Edwards into the backfield, and it is Edwards, and he is stonewalled by right. Tommy Dolman to punt. He'd only punted nine times this year coming into the game. Whoa. And he's going to use the win for good. Like a lot. I think that nearly was at the top of the stadium. Back to the eye. It's a short toss for Grant, and he has not had much running room at all so far today. That's just a terrific job by a couple of Wolverines right there. Derek Moore setting the edge, Hausman coming and finishing. When you watch Michigan's defense, you will hear Jim Harbaugh talk about the blue wall. And it's those defensive linemen that set the table for the guys behind him. Jesse Minner talks about the nameplate. When they watch tape, they get evaluated. They want to see your the name on the back of your jersey. And to do that, you've got to stay square and stop and be so strong. It's a white wall today, but so far effective. Second down for a Harburg. Bath at the line right back to him. Harburg <laughs> caught his own pass. He does have that his now second grab of the season. He was a tight end earlier in the year, so he's got hands. And remember this, Heinrich is six foot five. And it's not as if he's got a terribly low delivery, but once again, the timing of these NFL-esque defensive linemen. That's Jesse Minner's NFL background and Mike Elston, the D-line coach, and understanding, hey, you don't get home. You see it all the time in the NFL. Time that jump. The Wolverines have now done it twice. Once for a pick, once as a boomerang to Harburg. Third and five for Harburg. That's a laser for Billy Kemp and a Nebraska first down, much needed. That's a good throw, too. Remember, going this way, it's into the wind. Kemp so savvy, so productive. Nearly 2,000 yards receiving in his career between Virginia, five years, and the leader here in Nebraska. He's a good job with his frame. He's a low center of gravity guy, so those in cuts, those jet sweeps, highly, highly effective. Nearly 210 career catches to his name. That's Bullock out wide on first down out of the eye again, and they'll go with Bonner, the fullback, for a yard and a half. That's not exactly light treading in the middle there. Well, look at look at what I was talking about with the last names. You're going to see it right on the back here. Watch these guys. They're going to run a little line stud, and still, look how square they stay, Jason. They don't get turned. You get turned, you give up space. You give up an opening. You stay so square to the line of scrimmage, there's nowhere to run. It's basically that they're in charge, even though there's contact to them, right? And the amount of strength that that requires, the discipline and technique to leverage well, on top of the details. They're still playing without Mason Graham. Very talented sophomore out again today. Harburg runs right into it. And he is thrown down by Josiah Stewart. of a handful of stops. Baylor Temple, Carolina in the NFL. Harbert spits it out, got a completion for Kemp, and now it's going to be fourth and a couple in territory where you might think about it. Oshini back to punt as Michigan's defense has once again owned a game here in 2023. And this is dropped and recovered. Uh -oh. Tyler Morris has room. After the bobble, he finds his way into Buscini, who had to shove him out of bounds. Texas in a close one. Georgia in a close one. Corum in close quarters gets dragged down by Ty Robinson. Second down off the loss of three for Corum. Michigan does not lose yards very often, and now that's going to be delay. Yeah. 
See if they gave him a timeout beforehand. Prior to the snap, first charge timeout, Michigan. Timeout in the field. That year, and the debate rages on forever between players on both those teams. Who would have won that game, Nebraska or Michigan? Second and 13 for the Wolverines. Cornelius Johnson breaks a tackle and then traipses down the sideline very close to the line to gain. Third and one. Bredesen comes in as the extra tight end. Mullings is the tailback. He scored a touchdown earlier and he crashes to the 40. The eyes of just the defenders. Look at him. The commitment they've got to make to stop in that run. They use Wilson in motion, and then it's Corum moving those legs forward. He is a tough guy from the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Those guards play seven on seven late in the week in practice, and it is a big competition with their own teams that they've selected. McCarthy on the roll hits Wilson with a total off-balance effort. Good awareness here, too, right? And all they can to maybe make this the last possession of the half. Corum darting up the middle again and third and two Mullings again. That is just power for Michigan. First down. McCarthy doubles out of the pocket and launches. End zone Wilson. That had a vapor trail on it. J.J. McCarthy didn't want to go out of bounds. Nope. And we've talked about these legs. This is the X factor. You talk to any coach, how do you become a lead in the red zone? They all say the same thing. Got to run the ball, but then your QB has got to make these kind of special plays off schedule. And right now, he's not mentioning with Penix, and he's not mentioning with Caleb Williams, and he's not mentioning with Bo Nix. He better start getting mentioned. Because he's on his way to becoming 17 and one. He's a back-to-back -back Big Ten champ, back-to-back -back beat Ohio State. He's a big part of it. And now Wilson with his eighth touchdown reception in five games. Good lord. He had six in the first three weeks. It was only him and Desmond Howard in Michigan history with six receiving touchdowns in the first three weeks. But we saw a great ad libber in Caleb Williams in our opening game today. We saw J.J. McCarthy there do something that was very similar, just extemporaneous work out of the pocket and the arm to match. Yes, as they did his QB play. I was very excited to watch Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks this week. Beaten corn in the end zone. Thanking everybody and their mother. Like Gorham did last year. Here's a run for Harburg, and he finally breaks free across the 40-yard line. And to be clear, that doesn't mean he doesn't want to overtake Michigan and eventually. Ohio State at some point eventually, but it worked for him in the Big 12 to aim for not Texas and Oklahoma right away, but to get there down the line, you have to pass the other guys first. Second down and three. Everybody take a breath. Except it's not possible with this Michigan defensive line. Harburg on the roll and throw to the sideline. And that will do it for the first half from here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Extra butter in the first half for Michigan. And Nebraska will have it from the 20. First down for Harburg and Nebraska. It's a throw, it's on the money, and it's Marcus Washington with his first dragging Mason Blue all the way inside the 20. His seventh grab, and now Nebraska with a little moxie right out of halftime. Michigan has not allowed a third quarter point all year. Out of the shadows, Grant. He did at all times in that first half. Thank you, Allison. Just three incompletions for J.J. McCarthy, nine for 12. There's the option to short side and Grant. He lost the football. It's down on the ground, and it's Ben Scott, the center, who recovers it. Well, it's a good thing that Ben Scott, the transfer from ASU, follows this play because look at the number of Wolverines. Look at the pack of Wolverines that come calling. A beautiful punch right there. One, two, three, four, five. Michigan Wolverines, but just outside the arms of Jenkins, and Scott saves the day. Best punch in a while by a guy named Michael Barrett. 
Sorry, AJ. Third and two for Nebraska. And that is a killer. Is the last thing they need. False start. Offense number 23. Five yard penalty. Third down. No balance. Tough day. And there's a sack. Braden McGregor finally got his first. Wow. And he put 310 pounds on ice skates. We'll continue with the hockey theme. Watch Turner Corcoran right here. Left tackle. I mean, he is on skates into the quarterback. McGregor done a lot of the dirty work. And today, well, he's still showing up in the stat sheet. That is domination. This is not an easy kick here, Brock. 40 yards into the wind for Albano. And it is never there. But Irving Fryer and Mike Rozier were actually a package deal coming here to Nebraska. It was like, find a school that would take hold of them. They grew up in the same area in the Northeast. And good to see everybody back as McCarthy whistles that high for Loveland in high school as a wrestler. He was truly unbeatable, that guy in zero who's trailing that play. I will say this, he comes from Oakoma, South Dakota. Coaches talk about his leverage in that wrestling background, how he uses his body in close quarters. Third and long for Michigan. Five for seven on third down today. McCarthy felt the heat. Loveland turns the corner yep. and has a first down. But offensively, Loveland breaks it. And there was pressure again. That was Prince Will Umanmi Ellen, who was in McCarthy's face for him off the left side for a couple of yards. He described J.J. McCarthy with affinity as like clockwork. And we have seen Michigan's clockwork so far. Play fake. McCarthy snaps it off right down the middle. Low clothesline for a first down to Darius Clemens. Phenomenal. That is why Michigan, by far since last year, is the most proficient play action passing team in the country. Oh, bowling ball city. Population at least two. Corum has nine. Told me he repped 225 31 times. And there he goes, foot in the ground. Absurd. There's play action, there's McCarthy knowing exactly where Wilson is, and Roman Wilson flows out of bounds at the 11. Sharp drive for Michigan. Delayed handoff, Corum again plays pinball inside the five. Patient until he's not. There he goes again, and he is just short. Just short, second and goal from the one. Right back there, Corum is in. Standing, undaunted, touchdown Michigan. Look at, look at my man, Zach Zinner. Well, you look gotta eat ZZ first. Top. You gotta eat first. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta eat the corn. And look at my man ZZ right here. He's going to come on a little pulling action. They love to do this. A lot of counter. Pulling the guards. And Mr. Zinter is just hunting and driving and mowing people down. That dude's going to play a long time in the NFL. They just churn out offensive linemen nowadays. Awfully close to the very top of that record book before this season's done. 61 ears of corn feels like a lot. And it, did you find it here on the turf? <laughs> First down, another. The third one batted back at Harburg today. Like Derek Moore was in there, and it's second down. Teddy Prohaska comes in at left tackle, and it's a throw for Harburg, and it's behind his intended target. Will Johnson was closest. Washington. There's a lot of green grass if that ball is able to slip by Clinton Johnson's hand. Clinton Johnson played a lot of football for Michigan and just got his first start against UNLV in week two. Now under siege, Harburg just has to whip it out of bounds. Moore was very active on that drive. 
when he was on the pressure is there is a marker down at the far side of the field. Michigan has not been penalized so far and they are not very often they're second in least no. penalty this yardage illegal shift offense number 13 penalties decline fourth down. Yeah just add that to the list for Matt rule right there just the bunch formation not getting set that's a little bit again of a young QB that's got to look out before you get that ball snap make sure everybody is set. But this Michigan crew has sped the game game up again. There's a little teaching lesson for Matt rule calm cool collected. He knows that uh, <laughs> this game and a group like this defensively because he's built them a few different places along the way can discombobulate an offense. That's their passion really is to get you off balance as Bushini kicks it away and it's a fair catch for Morris drifting back to the 25. Instead comes Jack Tuttle from Utah to Indiana to Michigan. Four years at Indiana, five starts, one year at Utah. He did not play in 2018. And certainly does it in November with their schedule. He will enter those conversations. But you think skill-wise he deserves to be part of the conversation? He's pretty darn elite, Jason. Tuttle to throw, and that's incomplete. We also saw Davis Warren loosening up during the break. It's Tuttle for now. There's a marker in. Might have been a neutral zone infraction with the snap coming. And Barner couldn't hang on in traffic. Yeah, I think that was Ty Robinson who could not get back out of the neutral zone. Greg Blum with the Offside. call. Offside. Defense. Number nine. Five yard penalty. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 48, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It is number 48's first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, a second results in game disqualification. Again, a catastrophic mistake. They'll run it, it's Donovan Edwards. And when you have a roster like that and you fully develop it, guess what you can do? You can play 25, 30 guys and keep as you said the tread from wearing down on the tires. Tuttle to throw and it's a crossing route for Clemens who breaks it down slams on the brake pads. But all you do is use your own eyes and look at the size and strength of these young men. Drop it off near side it's Bredesen. I mean, he loves his players and he's the first one to say not about me talk, talk to my player talk to my player talk to my player. Is Edwards for a couple yards. I mean, he gets. Now you just sprinkle in a ton of depth and an elite quarterback that stirs the drink. McCarthy's back up. Tuttle on the handoff, and that is a ricochet forward for Mullings for a first down in the offensive line to help get him there. Here comes the next wave of Michigan offensive linemen. Yeah, Giovanni El Hadi, a Michigan native, in at left guard. Here is Edwards bursting through the gap. Hartzog again on the tackle. And you know this is one of those games right where somebody's going to say later in the season if someone goes down in the offensive line somebody's going to say thank goodness we had this game in the yep. second half to get some live reps. Yeah, and this is also a game that's not East Carolina UNLV Bowling Green and even Rutgers although Rutgers was three and oh coming into it last week. This is in this place and, and putting on just a physical whooping. Quick throw for Tuttle. He's got Samaj Morgan. And the freshman Morgan, who just had his first college touchdown last week, has his first touch today. JJ McCarthy, a great brave for him, said, Look, he's, he's not afraid to take a hit as a freshman even. Under a minute to go, third quarter, and it's Edwards who is tracked down and ridden down. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh just looking around yeah. taking it in. Well, if he was happy at halftime with Allison, I don't think much has changed other than the explosive pass play to start the second half. It was just continuing to do what you want to do. And impose your will, which he loves more than anything. Hand it off again for Edwards. And it'll be third and goal. Michigan on its way to 5 and 0, oh, it looks like. <laughs> Third down and four for McCarthy's backup, Tuttle. 
He has to roll out of the pocket with the pressure coming from right and go out of bounds. So it'll be fourth down for Michigan. That's a first for you. Yeah, right? I don't think I've seen That's that. That's a first. Yeah. Athlete, former hockey and lacrosse player from the south side of Chicago, as that goes swerving through. Overwhelming, but super, super efficient. And all Roman does is add two more touchdowns. Tommy Hill is here on the return. Oh, goodness gracious. Doctor. <laughs> what a hit. That was Christian Boyvin. Hello. <laughs> okay, that's the hockey part yeah. of J.J. McCarthy. Yeah, that's a check. I mean, he's got the shoulder harness on. He's got big old neck. I'm going to guess that helmet he had a little color to it, another sticker. Him on the run. Uh, speaking of those helmets, Allison Williams, you have one. The program win number they're a part of, but you also have numbers representing the area code where players are from. He wanted them more individualized, more player specific. They have all Big Ten honors, academic honors, kind of to tell the story of a player's career throughout their time at Michigan. There's a few acronyms, of course. Um, one of them is TED, if you can see that sticker. That stands for there every day. And apparently there's a new one this year, guys. The acronym is EUTM. Can you think what that means? Think about Harbaugh. What does he love to say? Uh, EUTM. Something about emotion and mankind. Yes, yeah, you're close. <laughs> Enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Oh, those are yeah. those are few and far between. They're a little harder to find. Only a few guys have gotten those this year. How about that? Love that. Thank you, Allison. We should get helmet stickers like that for our crew for good impressions, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> Second down run. <laughs> by Johnson it'll be third down coming up and what they look like is one of the most physically dominating teams in college football this season yeah, and Nebraska obviously is not the best version of Nebraska under Matt rule that they will be as that's flipped out wide and caught by the freshman Johnson and he just got railroaded down to the 40 yard line yeah, that's Ernest Hausman the former Cornhusker that is just flying but look at the chaos all around Harburg, so he's got to get out of the pocket. And here comes the former Cornhusker just throwing the hammer down. He's from Columbus, Nebraska, here in the state. Hausman spent one year here, seven starts. Harburg to throw. He's got a first down to Fedoni. You know, I was chatting with Jesse Minter yesterday, and he talked about Hausman being the guy and the last one to finish the conversation. And many of the groups by position will speak plays and speak things and speak scheme into existent stuff they want to do and see on the field. But they gave him the final word and the final stage. And according to Coach Minter, man, he delivered it last night. Well, he knows the pageantry here, right, and how loud these fans can be, and the expectations as well, as that's incomplete. I don't care who you're playing. You've given up two touchdowns all year. Here comes pressure from the backside. Harrell couldn't get there, and it's nearly intercepted. Keon Sab got his hands on it. Looked like Harrell got hogtied coming around the corner. Oh, Harrell wanted this sack so bad right here. Once again, look at the wide nine. Look at that technique. How far outside he is, but then the speed and the explosion to close the cushion, the ball sails. And Sab's a little bit upset because he certainly wanted that takeaway, but no chance as it hit the ground. I'm not here to throw penalties from six floors up, but that was a hole. You think so? I do. Okay. There's a lot of jersey going on. All right, I'm done. Third down for Harburg. He has to throw it quickly, and it's incomplete off the hands of Washington. And this has not been the day that Heinrich Harburg wanted it to be. Nope. And moving forward, we'll see what this looks like for the Huskers. Pressure again. He gets roped and dropped. Josiah Stewart was not going to let go. It's my Nebraska MVP today.
Denegal in at quarterback and it's a handoff on first down so Jaden Denegal is the third quarterback that Michigan has used today. He's a big old man now 6'5 235 out of California. And you know you want to be a physical football team. It helps when you've got physical quarterbacks. JJ can run it. This guy can run it a little bit as well but just uh, size and strength everywhere on this roster. And all Corum and McCarthy have to do is enjoy the rest of the day on a scorcher here in Lincoln Nebraska. Denegal to throw felt the pressure and now there goes a big body inviting contact and creating resonance into right. Kind of delivered the blows in all three phases offense defense on the kickoff covered special teams. Yikes. They will run it here on first down. That is Leon Franklin with the run. So look, Michigan at 38 nothing, number two in the country. Let's just, just because the, the, it comes up every once in a while in conversation in Ann Arbor and Columbus. Uh huh. Just hypothetically, we've seen both of them the last three weeks. Ohio State a couple weeks ago, Michigan this week. Uh, what do you think of that matchup? Yeah, I think their strengths are a little bit different. I think Ohio State on the perimeter, obviously, with Abuka and Harrison Jr. are elite, elite, elite. I mean, the best of the best in, as far as a duo goes comes down to the line of scrimmage, which they usually do in November. Ohio State's got continued room to grow. You know, big noon next week is highly interesting. Yes, Ohio State Michigan is the game that everybody's looking for. But that Maryland team is throttling Indiana this week. They're going to go in unbeaten to take on Ohio State. And, I, you know, Mike Loxley has built some belief there in College Park. Yep. This does go to the 21-yard line for Mullings. Can give that advantage right now in the column to JJ as well. Well, and the one piece of that that goes along with all of this is the psychology behind having won. I wanted to be a finalist or a winner of awards. I wanted to win a national championship. Yep. That is the point of this season for a lot of these Michigan guys who came back here. And there's a belief that they're going to beat Ohio State. Whether that's true or not, we'll find out together. <laughs> As that is a first down under six to go. Other than Georgia and a little bit of TCU. A little bit, but that was a 96 point game. I got my partner pretty excited right at the jump. I'm standing right here, I have a name. Yeah! Denegal down the middle, that's a touchdown go, for the Wolverines. Peyton O'Leary scores it. How cool is that for Mr. Denegal? His first. As a Wolverine, and you know, kind of like JJ, once again, I can pat the ball, I can step up in the pocket, six foot five, I can see it clearly, and I can deliver a seed. He will remember that one. And so will his buddy on the other end of it. This has been a bit of a statement. The Seafarers from Seattle and their fortunes. Turn for Tommy Hill, and he'll get to the 20, and the 23, and the 24, and the 25, and the 26. Taking the ball away, hit and harass the young Harburg, and just not allowed Nebraska to go Tonight. right up the middle. And there, finally, is a big run. Joshua Fleeks, the Baylor transfer, means no shutout in Lincoln today. Like it was going to be the first shutout for Nebraska since Jake Plummer and Arizona State in 1996. Onside kick opportunity for Nebraska. And this is on the ground and looked like recovered by Michigan. That was Sane Rastillo. Yep. All right, so here's what's coming up for the Michigan Wolverines. Right. November will be something to remember. This is quarterback number four for Michigan, and that's dropped by Morgan awesome. of Perseverance at Michigan. And a 
run on second down. Everybody wants contact. That's Leon Franklin, who's taking quorum lessons. Is to one, but in the same vein, according to Bo Schembechler, I don't know, they're kind of up in the physical here today. It's going to be a little bit closer to two to one. I want to clarify, I think. <laughs> Save me from myself. First down, and a run once again for Franklin. Second down for Michigan. Davis Warren looking for that first touchdown pass, and he gets clobbered by Wright. Third down and three. Need a push. Uh, I'm going to guess run play. Who you think? Yeah. Look at you, Sherlock Holmes. Tony Romo. <laughs> got nothing on me. Great. <laughs> With it to have to go. It has. By the way, part of the reason we haven't seen much option is Nebraska's only run 42 plays. Michigan has run 73 today. As that's up in the air, and it's tipped by Wright. He's been everywhere late in this game. I love the effort here of guys continuing to compete to the end, but full game is big step number one from Mr. Rule this year. Harvard tipped in the air and incomplete. Bodies everywhere. 3,000 week in and week out. It provides such a home crowd, such an environment. I would have said there's just no way. You know, the place, the, the facilities are off the charts. They're going to put another $450 million in to renovate the south end of this stadium. Matt Rule, he, he he knows what can happen here, right? He, he didn't just get let go and stay on the sidelines. He wanted to get right back into coaching young men, developing young men, and he's going to develop high school kids. And, and he's going to go about it that way. And that guy with the corn stalk, yeah, I know you're busy. Your phone's blowing up. He's going to have brighter days. Stock guy had a pretty bright day, honestly. Difference makers. Fourth down throw, Harburg. On target right to midfield for Jalen Lloyd, the freshman, with his first catch. One last play for Nebraska native Heinrich Harburg from Kearney, Nebraska. He'll roll it out. He'll throw it in the air. And it's incomplete. And the Michigan Wolverines once again pile on 17 straight in the win column in the Big Ten top five in league history and an impressive overwhelming performance for Michigan today.